Hello, hello. I just finished eating. And it was spicy food. How is everyone today? I'm going to draw an innkeeper for my uh, solo RPG thing. Let me just share that I'm streaming on Twitter and Discord because I always forget and then I'll get started. Can you hear the music, by the way? Is it too loud or is it too low? Can you even hear me? Am I too loud or too low? Too low, the music. Okay, I'm raising it. Let me know if this is fine. I'm good. What about the music? Music is very quiet. Okay, let's see. I don't want it to be too loud. Is this cool? Hello, everyone. Hello, Megan. I would say everyone's name. You know what? I'll say everyone's name. Okay. Hi. Oh god. Okay, the first one's already hard. Um Ligia. Hello Wimmy. Hello Jellyfish. Hello Trinity. Redishical. Starflower. Princess. The girly fox. Pokien. Uh did I miss anyone? Golden Lilac. Sarito. Antsy. Ev Evelyn. It's NJ and Gremlin and Ka Ka Kate Lope? Catalope? Donut? Okay, I shouldn't do this. <laughs> it's too many people. Wait, you still can't hear the music? It's not audible? It's, it's showing up as audible on OBS. What the heck? How come the music is not musicking? I have it on the correct sound device, too. I guess I should have checked this before starting because I, I just assumed it would work since it always does. Okay, you prefer no music anyway. Well, at least I get to jam to tavern music. Okay.
I'm also going to attempt to do this without push to talk because I want it to be talkative. Cool. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello, jaw. So I'm drawing uh, this girl here. Her name is Kenlin. I'll write it here. She's an innkeeper, tavern owner, and she is uh, my character or innkeeper from this solo RPG game that I'm playing called The Broken Cask, where uh, it's like a pen and paper tabletop RPG thing you do by yourself, and you just manage an inn. You have an innkeeper, you have staff. And you roll on a table with dice just to find out what happens in, like, your tavern's everyday life. And then you, like, write down the scenarios. It's kind of, like, just creative writing but made fun. Tavern owner. And uh, the way I do it, so there's that rule set for the broken cast specifically that I bought. And then I also combine it with another system where um i ask a table something like um is my innkeeper feminine or masculine and then i'll roll and then it says like feminine or something then i'm like okay i have a feminine innkeeper and that thing has uh other tables that lets you create the characters and i got uh the result that said that she is one-eyed and so she just has one eye she covers her other eye but her other eye is like i imagine it's it has a scar and it's like closed like this it has a scar like that and that's why she hides it and her background i even roll on her background it's really fun you can roll on everything whatever you want and since you're playing by yourself you can make up your own rules and you can break the rules too I put that she, or I got that she is a retired adventurer. So eventually, as an adventurer, she retired and then she was like, you know what, I want to start a business. I'm going to be a tavern owner and an innkeeper. And her, uh, her tavern slash inn is called the Flying Elf. I forgot how to spell flying there for a second. Yeah, it's really fun. And you also don't have to completely write it in a certain way. You could literally just put, like, this week someone stole our tips and then move on to the next week. Like, you don't have to write a full paragraph or page for the story, uh, if, even if it just exists in your mind, you know? Yeah, it gives you D&D &D vibes. It's uh, because it's solo RPG, and I found this out from doing solo d and They actually combined this with solo D&D &D because I changed their stats to be, like, 5e. So I'm making her right now, and I really only had, like, her face as a 
the design so far. So I was like, okay, I need to figure out her outfit. N need to figure out what she wears uh, while she's an innkeeper. And she's actually mainly the waitress. And I got her ears wrong here. Since she is supposed to be a half-elf. Um, which makes her the elf in the flying elf. And the flying, I interpreted that as uh, she uses the fly spell and uses that to... Uh, it's like Sonic. Like Sonic, except the waitress is flying everywhere with the food instead of skating. And then that's why it's called the flying elf. That's like the entertainment value of it. Yeah, solo RPGs are really fun for when you want to get started with something like D&D. &D. But uh, let's say you don't have a group of friends who plays D&D &D or you're too nervous to start with an existing group already. Or you're not sure if you're going to be good at it or if it's going to be fun and you just want to try it. You know, and then you just do it by yourself. Because the only person that can make fun of you is yourself. And you could RP as much as you want to and be as embarrassing as you want to and no one's going to judge you except for yourself. I gotta change the space also. I drew this, uh, these sketches on Procreate, actually, and then I transfer them to PC. I'm too lazy to change the ears on all of them. There. That's fine. Yeah, you can't be embarrassed unless you feel embarrassed. Hello, Kione? Kione? Yeah, the body is bodying. Uh, currently, because the, the game makes you roll your staff members too. And I rolled a Satyr Minstrel bard who plays in a tavern. And then I also rolled a Gardener. And um, my Satyr is this masculine, really buff kind of... Uh, not honk. What's the word? Himbo type of satyr because usually when you think of a satyr they're skinny but i i wanted the satyr to be large large and proud um unlike most satyr i guess who are usually skinny and twinkish <laughs> and then my gardener her name is uh rayla and i i i already love rayla because she's kind of like a the shy girl and I want to draw her too. I want her to have some some meat and fat on her, so I don't just have a bunch of skinny characters. So I'm excited to draw her later on. Can you link the photo? Sure. If links are allowed, I don't know if there's something I have to do to allow links. So. I was trying to figure out her outfit as, like, when she's just going around, flying around at waiting tables. And I was just on Pinterest looking for, like, I don't know, D&D &D outfits. This one got kind of too modern. So I don't really like it that much. Where is it? Because she has, like, a vest and collar, and I'm like, nah, I don't like that one. So I'm actually going to get rid of that one. This one, it's very wintry, so maybe because she's like wearing a turtleneck sweater type thing. So I was like, okay, maybe I can reserve this for uh, her winter outfit, something like that. Can you make a post about this stream? Uh, what, do, what do you mean make a post about it? Like, be like, hey, come over here, because if it's like that, then sure. Yeah, I, I really, like, this is, like, I literally just took this from Pinterest just to do a warm-up. 
uh, if I can find the picture, I show my reference. This is extremely modern, which is not the style that I'm going for with her, but I was like, whatever, let me just draw her in it just to warm up, even though it's not necessarily an outfit that she would have. But then I was like, honestly, I kind of like her with the turtleneck. This is the reference for this. You could give the modern one, give it an old times twist. Yeah, that's what what I'm hoping for, because I'm not being too strict about it. This is not Ada Wan. This is my innkeeper named Ken Lin, and I call her Lin for short. Are you tagged me in it on on what instagram i'm not i'm not gonna go on any social media right now because i need to start drawing oh my god cows not cows acting like you're here for the first time ever excuse me and megan megan youtube oh I, I don't get notifications on YouTube, so. What do you, okay, I'm gonna ask you chat. What do you think Ken Lin's personality is? Just from looking at her, since I haven't talked about her personality. Get rid of this. Squatting pose makes you think confident. Doesn't talk a lot. Wait, that's like pretty good. But she is pretty talkative. She's not quirky, but I rolled up one of her character traits to be that she is a compulsive cleaner. And that in turn, that makes her really impulsive. Yeah, she's very sassy and bold. That's correct. Black Cat GF, yes, correct. I don't know who Ray is, so I don't know if, if that might be correct, maybe. I've only seen season one of JJK and I barely remember anything from it. Is she for a D&D campaign? Cal's she's for my solo rpg it's not D, D. it's it's called the broken cask where you like have an inn so there's no like combat or anything it's just fun creative writing so her actual personality She's kind of like the tavern owner uh, slash waiter or barmaid that will, you know, like flirtingly smile at customers and be nice to them. But then once you start like, I don't know, being a rowdy drunk or you start making problem, she will like threaten you because she's a retired adventurer. So she knows how to get down and like violent. So she gets a little scary. And when she gets scary, she tilts her head and she shows her scarred eye to show you like, yeah, I've I've done some violence in my life. Here's look at my scarred eye. I've been through some stuff. But what I'm actually doing with this uh, RPG thing is I'm combining it with my D&D &D RPG. Or D my solo D and D, so this tavern is gonna exist in my solo RPG world, and so I'm just trying it out. Maybe later I could tell you what's happened so far in the tavern. 
more background, more story. I don't like this. Living for the drama, yes. Hello, mystical magic. Sorry if I miss your name. Monstrosity. That feels wrong to call you monstrosity. Also, bye, Rukus. I'm sorry if you're already gone. I kind of want her to have an apron type of thing because the tavern doesn't currently have like a designated cook or chef. So the three of them just kind of take turns cooking. So maybe she has an apron. Or or some something like this here, like that. But I'll see. Because I want the outfit to also kind of show some of her personality. Since that would that's what a good design does, right? Yeah, I should do an outfit that complements your personality. Yes, correct. But um, first, I have to figure out which outfit complements your personality. So if she's flirty, maybe she shows some skin, right? Which is why I like this, because like cleavage, right? But we'll see. So this is a corset. Maybe it's downward like that. I don't know if I want her to have fluffy sleeves. I feel like fluffy sleeves gives like a a fluffy girl vibe and it's not what what she is. The full apron. Yeah, this cows I was saying before, this could be like maybe her winter thing because she has like a turtleneck. So maybe Yeah, the off-shoulder feels nice, but I'm going to try another variation here where she has full sleeves. Maybe, maybe it's like this. Oh my god, hello Omigata. Maybe I'll touch up on colors in this stream. Who knows? You maybe you guys will get to see me struggle with water. Um, not water loads. How did I get to water? Should her skirt be long? Cause so far I've only tried out short shorter ones showing the ankles when it comes to character designs honestly i don't like the long skirts too much because i i like to actually see their uh, shoes because it, i feel like the poses get covered up by the skirts and it's hard to do the pose so maybe i'll just keep it short The Roblox face? <laughs> Scandalous. Yeah, she has her ankles out. Oh, give it a slit? Wait, you're right. Okay, maybe I could try that the next one. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. Make this smaller. And then duplicate one of these. But you guys have so many good ideas. I don't even have to do anything. I could just steal your ideas.
Oh wait, this is the wrong one. Or arm leather braces, perhaps. Per perhaps. Robbery is okay? Yeah, I mean, you guys are giving it to me, right? So, I want to try out that long slit. Or long slit. Long skirt with a slit. So. Right leg traps maybe that's that, that slit is too high am i forgetting how to draw a slit actually i like this leg better I don't have a reference for this. I'm just improvising with the slit. So this is how it looks without a reference. First. Right, and then her leg. maybe okay okay she's not rich so i i mean she's not like poor either she's a tavern owner that's struggling a little bit so i can't give her two too expensive looking things but like what if she has like a little thing or maybe thigh highs who knows We'll find out what her shoes are later. Ooh, okay, I like this slit. But then how would the slit work with an apron? So maybe this is just a variation. Because I feel like if there's an apron here, it would cover it. Or maybe it's not that bad. Yeah, bands on their legs. Maybe there's a band here. Something, something like that. I don't know. Okay, I can't, I can't think of it right now. Maybe let's do that for now. Or just shorts under, you know, like yeah, garter belts. Kals, I know you love a good garter belt. Something like that, and maybe I don't know. I have to look on Pinterest for ideas. Okay. Some medieval wear. What do barmaids wear? Yeah, this could be a fancier outfit. A going out outfit, perhaps. Maybe this one will just be like this. I'm using the wrong brush. That's why it felt wrong. It wasn't a textured brush. Like that. Like that. Oh my god, a tiny knife in it? Well, okay. 
I'm not gonna draw it because I don't know how to do that without it looking like. I mean, there there should be like a holder, right? Maybe it's over here on the side. Like attach the sheath, and then it's just like, haha, psych. There's actually a knife on my leg. Something like that. What could be her undershirt? How do I do this? Mm hmm. The corset like that. Maybe. There's some uh, medieval outfits that have like a little thing like this, but it doesn't really match her, I feel like. So I think this would have to go up like this. A corset like that. And then maybe a, a we're gonna get steamy here. Really low, low cut, <laughs> God. really low cut shirt. Maybe some ruffles in there. Sheesh. <laughs> A baggy blouse. Uh, I like the off shoulder, but maybe it's it won't be a long sleeve off shoulder. Maybe it's just like this. Since she's flirty, she's she's gonna be a little sexualized, but she doesn't mind. And then, arm bracer, perhaps singular arm bracer. Because she does, in the game, in the Broken Cast game, sometimes you do get attacked by monsters. Uh, so you have to fend it off. Or by, like, witches or something. So maybe she's like, okay, sometimes I might need to have- might need to fight. Go back to my old adventurer days. Yeah, I don't think the corsets were, like, you know, super cinched. Like, like a drag queen's. Or set or, or something back then. They have to have been made with some comfort in mind. Meg vibes from Hercules? Correct. I wish I could show you my hair concepts for her because I was really struggling with her hair and I landed on this one, but I was messing around with her having long hair because when when I was originally doing her hair, I don't know, for some reason I just envisioned her with long hair, but then I, it wasn't working out. Maybe I could do some of that right now. So, I, I really only had the bang. I was like, okay, she's gonna have a bang like this. That's covering her eye. And that's all I knew. But, I was seeing like, maybe she has long hair, like, long hair, like, straight hair? Or maybe it was just the angle that I... But it's like it felt wrong. I, like, I don't like this right now. And it was like maybe a big braid. Or something like that. But then like, this just feels like her. But uh, at the same time, it feels like... It feels like another version of Sydney. Except they're completely different in personality. What did I miss in chat? Hairstyle. And I, with the short hair, I was thinking, okay, maybe it grows out eventually in the the story. And she starts to have hair, like, just kind of sh shaggy hair that is long, like this. And I also want her to have a bandana that she wears, like, often. Not all the time, but often.
like that. And uh, I wish I could show the bandana thing that I had. Um, this is good, but when I drew it on Procreate, it looked even better. But I don't have it. Maybe I should quickly get it while I play an ad. <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm gonna get the picture so I can show all of you. I'm gonna put an ad though. All right, I'm getting the canvas file, so I might take a little longer. Okay, let's see what I'm missing, chat. What if her old self had long hair and now she chopped it all off? I really like that. I'm going to write that down here. Let's see. Okay, had, had long hair. Chopped. Chopped it. Yeah, with a given context about her. Yeah, can't really envision her with long hair. At least not too long. Maybe a ponytail? Yeah, a ponytail. I was thinking like a high ponytail. Let me download this. Hello, Google Drive. Okay. Hello, computer. Oh, there you go. Ooh, maybe it was cut off during a fight. I actually don't know what class she would be when she was an adventurer because when I started rolling on it, I got like a cleric. But I don't really want her to be a cleric. Uh, I also don't know much about clerics. Um, let's see. Oh god, they're all on. So this is her without her head. And I was messing around with her face also. I just had her bangs, like literally. And this is the hair I ended up with, except I added a little flare here. Oh my god. See, the long hair wasn't working out. I was messing with this. Like, okay, what if I did this? Rogue rogue would make sense for her personality i feel like so i was like okay here's one here's another don't know how different those are oh this one has uh, a little thing here this is this is the hairstyle i went with and then this is her her grown out type thing like a medium right this is a, a messier version 
And then this is a uh, one with a bandana that I really, really like. Oh, probably keep on the side. Who knows? Here's another that I messed around with. Not good. It's not giving. This one is not giving. This one also, no, not it. Curly hair was not working out. And that one also wasn't working out. So I was struggling. I'm going to put that there. Off topic, what tablet do I use? I use, uh, I'll write it down. Artist. XP Pen Artist 14 Pro Second Gen. It's a long, it's a long name one. Your stomach hurts. Oh no, your tummy hurts. This one's looking more detailed than the others. Maybe this is like this. And then it's like sewed in like that. I don't know. That kind of doesn't look good. Okay, I like this one. Let's do another one before I maybe draw up my um my gardener. Actually, I haven't talked about her her background, Kenlin's background, and the reason why she retired as an adventurer because I actually rolled on that because um another part of her background is that she used to be the leader of her adventuring party. And so I was like, okay, if she used to be the leader, there has to be some reason why she retired and decided that she wasn't for that life anymore. And I started rolling on it, and I got, like, uh, some type of betrayal. And I was like, oh, God, that sucks. So somehow her adventuring party betrayed her. Did she make her own outfits? You know, maybe. If she's not too rich, maybe she does set seem like the type of person that's like, you know what, I could just make them. Because, um, well, first, let's talk about the betrayal. <laughs> While I find an outfit. Hold on. Ooh, I like that. Uh, there's an idea. So, so I started rolling. I, I use this thing called Mythic GME, GM emulator, to roll tables for what happens. And the way it works, it'll just give you a word and you kind of roll with it and uh, interpret a situation out of it. So I got Betrayal. And then I got, like, a deal, I think. So I was like, okay, what if her adventuring party made a deal with the devil? This might not be great writing, but I never claimed to be a good author. So what if her adventuring party made a deal with the devil... Where the devil, since this is going to kind of be in the D&D &D world, was like, I can make you guys rich. You don't have to adventure anymore. You don't have to work and do quests anymore. I can make you rich. But the, the catch is that you have to humiliate and uh, insult and basically outcast one of your party members. No, no, no. The devil didn't betray the party. The devil is making a deal with the party. Um, like a contract type thing. I can make you rich if you do something for me. And the party was like, okay, what are the terms? So, like, um, I envisioned that Kenlin was off doing something else while her party was doing this deal. I know some of it doesn't make sense. And so they were like, okay, Kenlin's like the perfect person. And maybe they secretly didn't like her. Because that happens in group situations, right? And so they humiliate her, they betray her, and I haven't come up with the details of that yet, but she was, like, devastated because she thought, like, this group 
that she's traveled with for a really long time liked her. I guess, I guess they didn't. And so she was betrayed by them in that way, like emotionally in terms of friendship. It wasn't like, you know, they didn't like kill her family, but it still sucks. Because, you know, like, what, what do I mean when I say party? Um, like a group of people who travel together and do stuff together. So like, like a party in a game, if you play games. Yeah, it could have been out to prepare something, right? Since she's the leader. So maybe she was even doing something for the group. Maybe she was planning this huge thing that she was excited for, and then suddenly they betray her, and she's like, oh God, that sucks. And so that happens, and she finds that it was for them to get rich. And she's like, well, you know what? I can get rich on my own. And I don't need to make a I don't need to make a deal with the devil to get rich. And so she uh she finds this abandoned building. And she's like, I'm gonna turn this into an inn. I've always wanted to be a business owner. And she kind of makes this impulsive decision to fix up this inn and invest in it and turn it into a working building. Um and that's how she made her inn. And it was like this shaggy building that she eventually turned into her inn. That, I mean, that story is not great, but it's something. I could always tweak it. Like how in Genshin Impact you have a party. Yes, you have a party of playable characters. Yeah, very ambitious and independent since she's a kind of like a natural leader. How do I want this corset to look? I don't know if I like this middle thing. I don't, I'm not doing this. So since I'm combining this with my D&D &D thing, my current D&D &D solo campaign is set in a region where um, it's non-magical. Imagine there's just a bubble, a secret bubble of civilization in a fantasy world where, uh, the government is like, what if we have a place that isn't fantasy? What if it's just normal living, you know, away from all the monsters, away from all the magic, and so people could just live kind of normal lives, and that's the setting. It's called Mistwind, and... This tavern, because uh, the the game, the Broken Castle, it lets you roll on what your tavern looks like, what goes on there. And I got that my usual patrons are magical people. And I got also that uh, the tavern's quirk is that half of it phases into a different dimension sometimes. And I was like, wait, that's perfect. So I was like, what if this is on the border of that non-magical place? And also the magical place. So like half of the tavern is in normal world or something like that. And then the other half of the tavern is magical. And so it's a it's a tavern where magical people can go to just relax and maybe try out and sample the normal life. And then it's where the normal non-magical people go to test out, be like, because the advertisement of it is like, oh, there's a flying elf. But then they think it's just prosthetics and, you know, like a string. Not a string. Uh, what is it called? When you're hooked up to the ceiling and you look like you're flying a wire. So they think it's just fake. But in reality, it's real. So business is pretty good. What if she wasn't wearing a skirt? Let's try this. If any of you are at all interested in whatever thing I'm doing, 
with the solo RPG stuff and creative writing, honestly, try it out. Even if you think it's slightly interesting, try it out. It's really fun. There's like a whole Reddit for a solo role playing. Where people are just like, yeah, I do this and you can find out more information because that's how I found out about it. And I was like, what? This is something that I can do? What kind of pants? What kind of pants? What is it called again? So this one that I'm playing specifically is called the Broken Cask. And then if you want to learn what more type of games like that are, you can go to Reddit. Um, solo role playing. I would link it, but I'm too lazy to get the link for the subreddit. So she could wear pants. Maybe this is her going out outfit. Pants. I don't really know how medieval pants look like. Whatever, I'm too lazy to look it up. I always love adding a patch. Oh god. She's looking a little tilted. But it's fine. But like, what if there's a patch in her pants? Maybe they're a little loose here. Actually, no, they should be tight. Yeah, baggy, like, I'm seeing some designs here that are, like, leathery, but I don't think she would wear leather. Yeah, what if they were a bit baggy? Maybe I'll copy this and then I'll do another version. How do I make this not look weird? I did that badly. I don't like it. Let's, let's try this. Ooh, she took her general attire from when she was an adventurer. Actually, the game gave me, uh, when I was rolling for her personality traits, it gave me that she's wearing magical armor, but I don't really know what that could entail. It could be anything, any type of magical armor, because it doesn't tell you what type it's just that it's magical armor so i don't know i could literally just say that her corset is magical or she's mag she's wearing some magical jewelry um but it did say armor so maybe some leather braces or something like that this is hard <laughs> okay what if she had a cloak for this one. Maybe like this. A loose, loose shirt underneath. Loose shirt underneath.
And then on top, she had a cloak. Maybe she's going out and getting ingredients. And her waist is still snatched, yes. Maybe it's like this. Some of her shirt is going out. That. Necklace that she wore, yes. Like, uh, I'm not very good at designing necklaces, but. Maybe something fancy, who knows? I don't know. I don't know what I'm drawing right now. Let's... Ew, that, that doesn't look fancy. Like a, like a crest of something. I don't know. What does a fancy necklace look like? I'm too lazy to... Yeah, whatever. Fancy necklace. <laughs> okay. Fancy. Fancy necklace. Fancy necklace. Alright. I really wish you guys could hear this tavern music it's really setting the mood for me personally and i wish it would set the mood for you too oh my god Calus dm'd me with something it's amazing a little knife a little knife that she could use i'm definitely gonna put that in here hello kokimi kokimi draws thank you and then, what if she had a cloak? There's so many different types of cloaks. I I remember watching a video on, like, the different types of cloaks that there are in medieval. They even touched up on, like, Gandalf's cloak. But I love a good cloak that just splits in the middle. Like, kind of like a crop top cro cloak? Croak? Like this? Where it's like, like that? Just get rid of this. And then it's like this. And it's like that. Something like that. Oh, but it doesn't match her. What if... Does anyone here like um, asymmetrical cloaks? Where they have like a... One cape type thing. Because I love it. I remember when I was playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate, that was like my favorite part about the assassin designs. Specifically on Eevee. Yes, Kals's profile picture is very cute. And guess what? She drew it. Chris Kaus is also an artist. An amazing one. You did a, a design for Assassin's Creed? Or am I understanding this incorrectly? Wait, did Cal's not draw that? Did I get it wrong? <gasps> I'm wrong. Wrong information. False news. Fake news. What the heck? I always thought you draw that. You drew that. So I've been living a lie, Cal's. I've been living a lie. Well, drop the artist, please. <laughs> Even Megan knew. Maybe I just don't pay attention. Your 
Remember you had this one OC with the cave? Mid-evil witch. So, like, slightly evil witch? Like, sometimes she's evil? Is that what mid-evil? Or do you mean medieval? Like, like, medieval times? Or do you mean slightly evil witch? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're chronically online. You work 12 hours a day. Uh, that's what being a nurse or whatever means. Do we call you a nurse now, Megan? Or are you some other medical terminology? I sound really stupid right now. It's really long. And then, perhaps, like this, you do be just a nurse. Okay. Period. Nurse, Megan. It is a cute title. Okay, I like this. Maybe she, maybe I'll even give her a little small little hairstyle for here. So, maybe she has her hair tied up, but it's really short hair, so I have to exaggerate it a little bit, like this. It's looking cute, which I don't want her to give. I don't want her to give cute. I want her to give mature. So. Maybe. Yo, okay, I honestly don't like her with her hair tied. <laughs> Never mind. Hello, hello, Joseph. Joseph, uh, you have to go to bed. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, NJ. Thank you for being here. Sorry. Uh, I got distracted. You play an ad real quick. Quick warning. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a lot easier to notice viewers when there's not as many. Um, I remember my first or second stream when the chat is like a lot busier than usual. Um, it's more difficult for me to keep track of everyone. Uh, and I can't like say hi to everyone specifically and target them. But Try my best. Try my best. Maybe I'll clean this one up. Then move on to my gardener.
Hello, Cassander. Mr. Cassander. I believe you believe in me. I believe in you. How about that, huh? I don't even know if this is supposed to be a corset. It doesn't really look like it. I don't really know what I was drawing when I did this. I guess I make it a corset? Question mark. Maybe give her a random belt. That makes no practical sense. Something. For, oh wait, no, not a belt, but like a, a cloth around here. Oh wait, no, that's her apron. It's not a corset. And the little thing. Like this. I gotta figure out my music thing, because hopefully next stream I'll have that figured out, because the, the medieval music is hitting. Thank you, thank you, Geek Corset, thank you. This medieval music is medievaling. Clammy well, I mean, hands is not a sign of death. Yeah, Kels, I'm using I'm using OBS Studio, and I have it set to the correct uh, source, and I see the the green audio thing going up and down, and it's uh, well right now it's muted just in case, but. Let's see, if I unmute it, it's it's going up and down. I can see it, and I don't think I have push to talk on for for my audio. Let me make sure. Maybe maybe I'm just wrong and it's actually been on. Yeah, push to talk is not enabled for my desktop audio. Oh, have you run into this problem yet? Uh, or before, Kals? Awesome. I will annoy you after a stream. And it's time to hit up Kals when I'm free, yes. Also, like, I don't know how to make YouTube mods for chat. I don't know how to do that. But, I mean, it's not too busy. I could do it myself. I look at it all the time anyway. For this one, she just has a typical skirt. Normal. Normie skirt. giving the illusion of a humble tavern owner slash local flying elf that can sometimes get down and dirty and threaten drunk people. Oh yeah, I haven't I haven't um told you all what's happened in my game so far. Cuz I've only done two sessions. Um and I totally played it wrong. I didn't follow the rules correctly on, on the first time I played, but the first time I played, um, Ken Lin was doing everything. She was waiting tables, and I kept rolling events that had uh, customer service, and it kept being like difficult customers, troublesome customer, and stuff like that. Literally... There was someone who was drunk and then they got up and they were about to get like a decorative weapon on the wall and start like flinging it around. And so she was having a difficult night, Ken Lin. And she she definitely threatened some people that that session. So there was someone, uh, a difficult worker, not worker, difficult customer. And she was like, 
please sit back down and shut up or something like that. And there was some drunk people that she ended up threatening. She did her little head tilt that shows her scarred eye. It was fun. Really. It really solidified her personality. You have to go. Goodbye. Goodbye, girly fox. Thank you for being here. Wait, what did I miss? Yes, I think wanting to play League of Legends is an indicator that you're dying, but I'm not a nurse. So listen to Nurse Megan. Oh, wait, she said yes, too. Have I read the Percy Jackson books? Absolutely. Not the new one, but the older ones? Absolutely. I had a whole phase where I was rereading that with Cal's. And I even started a YouTube channel where I reviewed it. It's very interesting. I well, yeah, there's a new one. Did you not know? Kals, there's a new one that takes place after I think Trials of Apollo, where Percy is in a senior year. He's like turning 18 or something. Crazy. I know, but I still haven't I still haven't finished the Olympians. Cows, they still haven't finished it, and I'm too lazy. You're finally reading the Hunger Games. I remember reading the Hunger Games in, like, 6th grade or 5th grade. It might have been 5th grade. Wild, something wild for 5th grade to read, but it was in the library, so I guess the school thought it was okay. What do you think of Hunger Games? I barely remember it, but definitely graphic. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, I don't know how YouTube emotes work. I haven't even messed around with that. You can't imagine Percy turning 18. I also can't imagine. I will forever envision Percy as a 16-year-old. Since I'm pretty sure that's when I stopped reading, <laughs> when he was 16. So I stopped reading around uh, the House of Hades. I think I read like the beginning of House of Hades and then I stopped. And that happened two times. That happened when I was younger. Like when I was 13, and then that happened again when I tried to reread the series. So, is this YouTube's pog face purple wide eyes? So, so if you on YouTube when you think something cool will happen, you just go face purple wide eyes. House of Hades is definitely curious for me, yes. You know, something that I'm sad about is that my brother had the uh, original book covers or original... Because, you know, they change the book covers every now and then of the... The first series, Percy Jackson and... What was it? Yeah, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. And those are the ones that I read, like they were showing the test of time and stuff. And then he lent them to my cousin and then my cousin lost them. And I'm like, how dare you? How dare you? We could have kept that. And I, I don't know, sold it for like 20 bucks today. I mean, I wouldn't have sold it, but still, it's nice to have the original covers. And it's so annoying. When Ahab's is streaming, I'm <laughs> face purple white eyes. Yes. When Megan gives good medical advice, I'm face purple wide eyes. And when Megan gives bad medical advice, I'm face red angry eyes or squinted eyes. So Megan, don't give bad medical advice. Cousins lose everything. 
I I think okay. I'm not my cousin, right? <laughs> but I when I was playing Final Fantasy 13, I think I lost the CD, and it sucks. I still haven't finished that game. I got stuck on the helicopter part, and then I lost it, and then I never finished it. But I keep hearing some stuff, especially from Mr. Cassander, that Final Fantasy XIII is not good. Has anyone else here played it? Okay, one second, bear back. Hello, I'm back. AI ads. I'm so disappointed in YouTube. Has anyone else been getting the problem when you try to look on Pinterest for like references or inspiration and you just keep getting AI art and it's like, it's just plaguing Pinterest because for my perspective class, I'm looking, I'm even just trying to look for bedrooms, just a simple bedroom picture. And it's like AI, it's like a blanket that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like trying to use it as a reference. And then once I start to look closely, I'm like, wait, that chair has five legs. And I'm like, oh, this is AI. Yeah, it took over everything. It's just so hard to look for references now. Like, what am I supposed to do? I guess, I guess if you're like looking for furniture stuff, you can go on like literally Amazon or like Wayfair or something and look up real pictures of furniture that way but i just realized i've neglected to design her shoes but that's fine that's fine because i barely draw full bodies these days anyway oops all right i want to start on another character. Let's see. Wait, what's the size of this one? Two, two. 23, 1294, 23, 1294, 23, 23, 1294, okay, usually crop the feet out, yeah, that's, that's also what I usually do, or I just forget about them and they're just like that. I actually had to draw a sheet for my homework. It felt really weird. This next character that I'm going to attempt to just draw up is the Flying Inn's Gardener. And uh, I really only know one detail about her is that she her name is Rayla. Don't even know her last name, or maybe I do. Let's see. Okay. 
Rayla. Rayla Dow. What the heck is this name? I got this name from the book. I didn't come up with it. I just rolled it. It's Dower Hand? Door hand? How do I say that? And these are her, uh, these are what I got for her <laughs> character traits. She's human. Human. So she's from the non magical side. And guess what? She's desperate. Don't know what that means. But I think I interpreted it as like she's desperate for money. She's desperate for a job, and so that's why Ken Lin hired her. Because during the job interview, she's she's a non-magical person, so she didn't know, like, that magic existed. And then Ken Lin just dropped, like, the bomb on her, and she's like, Oh, by the way, if you want to work here as a gardener, um, magic is real, and you're going to have to accept that. And then she's just like, what the heck? But then she just accepted the job anyway, because... She's dressed, she's desperate for a wage. So, yeah, door hand. Can, can I just, should I just change her hair? Not her hair, her her name to actually being door hand? Let's do a poll. Just for fun. How do I, how do I do this again? Change. Wait. Change dower hand to door hand. You would be so mad if your last name was door hand. Me too. Someone voted no. Oh wait, someone you could change your answer. <laughs> They're all yes. Wait, no, yeah, someone did vote no. It just disappeared because it was so unpopular. All right, who voted no? <laughs> okay, so that's what I have for her. And she's the gardener. So, like, she knows how to... She knows stuff about flowers, I guess, and plants. Um, so far in my game, Rayla has done one event where she had to tend to the flowers and guess what? She failed it. Because the way the game works is you roll up an event like, um, a cleaning task or a gardening task and then the character has stats and then you roll dice to see if they succeed or fail. And whether or not they succeed or fail, you just kind of come up with what happens. And she failed at tending the flowers. It's like, bro, you're a gardener. How dare you fail at tending the flowers? Um, all right, I'm ending this. We are changing it to door hand. And so when she failed tending to the flowers, I had it so that since she just learned that magic is real, she only watered the non-magical side of the tavern's flowers, and then she neglected to cross over to the magical side and water those. So, yeah, she failed that task. She's kind of a bad gardener. Have I seen that TikTok where someone is trying to put ice in the freezer? <laughs> they roll a dice to see if they succeed? No. Please link. I want to see. Is it is it from like one of those videos that are like D and D in real life or something? I also, for some reason, envision her with a warm hair color, like either auburn, auburn, or really light brown or reddish brown. Or reddish brown hair. And I want her to be kind of chubby. Chubby. Uh, and 
I don't know. I guess short. I don't really want her to be tall since Ken Lin is already tall. Or maybe average. Or average height. Yeah, like, uh, maybe not light orange. Like, still kind of bordering brown, but in that area. Radish? I mean, you know, radish, radish, a little too red, but that works. I'll, I'll add radish, or maybe I'll just change this to radish. Oh, I wrote really big. Okay. So, let's see. I have to draw the base. Um, let me find a pose that I like. Do I not? Hold on, I'm gonna play an ad while I do this. Let me find a pose. Shy pose. Let's see. For Farina. Who's Farina? I'm googling that, and I. I hope I don't regret this. For oh, Genshin in fact. Okay, is this like a new? I don't really keep up with Genshin, so. The only fan art I've done for a gacha game. Well, actually, I've drawn Beto for Nagata. I've drawn uh, Aira from Dislight because I was addicted to Dislight at one point in my life. And I even spent money. That's how much that gacha gripped me. Shy pose, shy pose. Yeah, we're at font size 157. Honestly, that's just how I write naturally. Have you, have you off topic? I still haven't started drawing. Off topic, but has anyone like been in school and you're like writing notes and then you're falling asleep and you're still like writing your notes while you're falling asleep? So like this is the notebook. And then it's, you're like, okay, three times five is 15 equation. And then you just start like writing chicken scratch as you like are taking notes and you're falling asleep and you're like this. And then you wake up and suddenly you're like, what the heck, what, what is this? And you're like, I'm screwed because I need these notes and they look like this. I've definitely done that in like my first year of college, just in sociology. Because that was like a lecture class with a really like big lecture room. And I was like, yeah, the professor won't know if I fall asleep. Let's try G-Pen. Or I don't know. What brush do I use? Whatever. Everything brush.
You doodle on your notes. I wish I had the patience for that. You can't find the TikTok. Sad. Sag. Uh, I had a phase where I would really try to make my um, notes look good. That lasted for maybe two days. And then I gave up because it hurt my hand. <laughs> or maybe I was just writing too small. I don't know. Tomorrow is picture day. Oh, I used to hate picture day. I dreaded picture day. So like, I have to smile today? Are you kidding me? No, I wasn't, I wasn't that depressed in school. But I still hated picture day. Oh yeah, I really hate it when they would try to pose you. End of life care in cute fonts. Megan, I know you, you have some nice looking notes too. I I remember writing like um the Protestant Reformation in like cute font. And then I would write really small right in the middle of the lines. Because I don't know, I was allergic to touching the lines when I would write. So it's like Protestant Reformation, like that. And then it hurt so much and it would take like hours to write my notes. I don't like this this brush. Uh, I want a different pose. Okay, I need to do like a default pose. How did I sketch this one? So if she's, if Kenlin is tall, then this one, Rayla, like that I don't know how tall Kenlin is maybe she's like she's like 5'11 and a half like almost 6 feet and she's like one of those people that just says 6 feet and rounds up oh does someone have to leave bye Kokimi Kokimi You could fit two lines without one? Jesus, Kals. How small exactly did you write? Like, five-point font?
made you write faster. When I write fast, I tend to write kind of cursive -y and it gets big. So I can't I can't do it small. How do you write fast when you write small though? Like I feel like writing small makes would make a person write slower, would wouldn't it? Or I guess because the words are small, you don't have to spend too much time on them. But still. Your teacher made a comment about how you had the neatest handwriting. Jeez. You know, I had a math teacher. My calculus teacher would, we would have to turn in our math notes or our math homework. And he would, after he grades it, he would pass it back to us. And when he passes it back to you, he like judges your handwriting. He tells you what he thinks about it. And so for most of the people in there, it would be like chicken scratch, chicken scratch, chicken scratch, work on your handwriting, you know, it would be like that. And then I had fairly good handwriting, but then there was one point where I would draw my zeros like this. And it made him go on an entire tangent because he's like, what is this? What is this? And he like, started, he's like, what is this? And I'm like, it's a zero, bro. Like, it's like how a calculator writes a zero. And then he did a whole tangent. It's like, no, that looks like a Greek letter and it could be confusing. And I'm like, okay, you could just tell me to not do it and I'll not do it. And yeah, so I'll never write zeros like that ever again in my life, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's clearly a zero. If I'm like 80 equals X and I write it like this, that's pretty much obviously a zero, you know? I don't remember the the letter or greek letter whatever it was that he thought it was oh my gosh he marks it as a zero that's pretty uncalled for what if the dude's a genius let's say let's say I'm trying to look at references. Oh wait, I forgot I was I had to change the fo the pose the foes. My accent. The Filipino accent comes out sometimes. Knee needs to be higher. I've only been streaming for like 
an hour and 40? It's felt longer. Oh, she looks so cute. You have to get going. Goodbye, Kokian. Do I draw from reference or imagination? Most of the time I try to find a reference for whatever I'm drawing so that I know I'm doing it correctly, but... Usually it starts out as imagination, and then once I have the idea down, then I start to look for references for that specific thing. References are good, you know, it's important. I am important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Arms. Don't want to draw hands. Are her hands, are her arms too long? Kind of now that I think about it, I kind of want to make Ken Lin non binary because why not? Like she, they, they're kind of giving that vibe hyper feminine, but still non binary nonetheless. Yeah. Really sucks for artists these days that they have to struggle with finding good references because everything is AI. Like my sister gave me a uh, gave me this reference for the Satyr character that we have in our uh D D game. And then I mean the guy has like muscles in places where he should not have muscles uh and then i started using it and then as a reference to draw the character and i was like looking at his horns because he's a satyr and i'm like hold up he has like like you know what let me just show a little picture of it like his horns make absolutely no sense look at this Okay, there's a small one. There's a small one, and then a big one, and then a twisty one? Like, what? Why does he have three horns? And I was like, yeah, this is AI. And, I mean, just look at the shoulder. Why does he have, like, 10,000 muscles on his shoulder? On his diploid? Is that what it's called? Deltoid? Whatever it is. Yeah, the imagination. I don't even know what her face is supposed to look like yet. So I will leave it blank. Since she's a human, she has normal ears. Oh, it needs a little longer neck. I think she got a little too short. So I'm gonna give it a 
Is it diploid? Nurse Megan comes in clutch. I've barely started learning the muscles. So you saw you saw my suffering on Instagram. It feels... Mm -hmm. mm. Deltoid? How dare you mislead me? Where did diploid? Where did I get that from? Is there something that No way? <laughs> something in a nucleus that contains the chromosomes? <laughs> That's what a diploid is? <laughs> Gross! Biology. I hated biology. Is YouTube my full job? Uh, I, I also do commissions. I'm a full-time artist, but I don't solely do YouTube full-time. I also own a business. I just do a lot of things. But I am a full-time artist. Diploid and haploid. Megan with the knowledge here. Enlarged brain. Haver. How do I get commissions? I just post them on Instagram or Twitter. And then uh, I, I've been doing them on this website called VGen now that um, lets people request. So if she's a gardener, she would, and she's from kind of a, a Victorian city, like a London y type city, she would have an attire that is uh, more in that style rather than medieval <clears throat> but she is not rich which is why she's working so let's go for something simple first I guess if she was wearing a corset, she would get a little cinched. And let's make like this. Like. Like that. And. Then, and then it puffs out. I'm gonna bring over one of these. To a company, Rayla. So I can get the vibes correct. 
V Vision is good for getting noticed. Yeah, it has a marketplace. However, yeah, the fees are quite high. There's an added 5% fee. Um, but it is good for getting discovered and getting slots. How do you get started doing commissions? I have a video on that, but um, the first thing to do is really just understand how that whole culture works you know you, you need to have a a way to get paid whether it's through paypal or something else and you need to first figure out what you want to do for commissions what you're going to offer people and you need to have a way for people to find out about your commissions because you're not going to get commissions unless you put yourself out there so ideally you would want an audience of some type Am I making character concepts for anything specific? Um, oh, it's Liddy. Hello, Liddy. I'm making this for a solo RPG that I am playing. That, it, like, I have a tavern. And I'm making the innkeeper and, like, the employees. And right now, I am working on the gardener. Where am I from? I'm from America, North America, United States. I'm a American. Oh wait, I lost my reference. So Rayla is not well off. So she's gonna, and she's a little bit more on the modest side compared to Kenlin. So she's gonna be showing less skin because she has a reputation to protect. So hello, uh, Naya Lieb. Naya Lieb. I'm saying it wrong. Sorry. Naya Liab. Okay, correct the first time. Proud of myself. My one of my professors for my uh, ZBrush class, he's a Japanese man, worked on amazing stuff with like Disney, and every time he does roll, he makes sure to say everyone's name, full name, uh, first name, last name, and even though he struggles through it, he gets it down. Um, and I think it's so, like, endearing because he doesn't, like, skip anyone's name. He doesn't try to, um, you know, just skip it because he knows that he, it's hard to pronounce for him. He, like, really tries to pronounce everyone's names, and I think it's so endearing. But then that also means roll call takes a little while. Yeah, older father figure. He actually reminds me of my dad because they both talk really slow. <laughs> but he's a good professor, despite the fact that he talks slow. And that English is not his first language. Rayla's, she's desperate, but I feel like She's nice. She's on the nice side. Kind of like... I was about to say Penelope from Bridgerton, but honestly... Honestly? Penelope's kind of shady. 
Penella? Penelope is kind of shady. So, I don't want to use her as an example. I feel like they just have to see and try to pronounce it. It doesn't look difficult to pronounce. It's just that there might be another way to pronounce it than the one you're thinking. People, um, people get my last name wrong all the time. I was at jury duty and the attorney kept saying it wrong. And I corrected him the the first time he said it, and then he just forgot the next time. So I gave up. <laughs> What's my name? My name is Lauren. But that's not the one that gets mispronounced. No, I don't feel like saying my last name here. I'm spending way too much time on this face. This isn't exactly how I envision her, so I'll probably change it later on, but I just want to have something down. Maybe I shouldn't have made her short. I don't actually see her as someone super short. But we'll see. Maybe it'll grow on me. Am I working on more traditional art? I have a traditional art video planned for this weekend. Maybe Monday, maybe Sunday, but I'm editing it. All I have to do is do the voiceover for it. Yeah, I feel like most people who have difficult to pronounce names for like the majority of people, uh, you know, have stopped trying to correct because it's honestly just tiring <laughs> so that's that's good that you tell them to stop you if you say it wrong How do I keep live in live? Oh my god, I can't speak. Live streams interesting. Honestly, I'm still learning. This is like maybe my fourth stream on YouTube. I used to stream on Twitch too, but I would say just um ask questions to chat, find something interesting about what the people are saying, just with any conversation. Um, I feel like I know how it feels to talk to someone and feel like they aren't listening or that they aren't interested. So when I talk to people, I, I usually always try to find something, just even like a trickle of something interesting in what they're saying. And then I target that. I guess just treat it like, uh, treat it like if you were sitting in the room with them because i mean would you ignore someone who, who was sitting right in front of you and was trying to talk to you i don't know what hair she would have
Yeah, like you're in a coffee shop. Yeah, exactly. Except when I'm in a coffee shop, I don't talk to people. I'm way more introverted than I'm being right now. I should have figured out her hair before I did the outfit. I'll go with something default for now. Hmm. braid yeah if they're out and about and like um squatting down and kneel and not kneeling down what's that word bowing down another word for that whatever you know doing some motions with their body working with plants then they don't want their hair to get in the way what a, what about a low pony Let's try that first She just has no arms. Let's try a side bang. Side bang low pony. Low, low braid. How did I start drawing? Sorry, I might have I missed that question. I just... I don't know. Like, I started drawing when I was really young. I would just draw in sketchbooks. My dad is very art and a, a very artistic person, so maybe that's how I got into it. But I remember I would uh, draw flowers and stuff, and I would doodle Yeah, at school. And eventually, I got into anime. I remember literally just copying Naruto. Uh, fan art. I would copy other people's art and then eventually I just got going into the groove of it. Do I plan on making more sticker videos? Um, I had them planned but then I just got too lazy to edit them so probably not and it's also just really awkward to film them. So maybe not. Oh yeah, crouch. Yeah, the crouch is the word that I was looking for. If you're not really good at improvising conversations, yeah, you could write the yeah, I, um for my videos, I don't just like talk to the the mic and improvise everything. I write down what I want to say first in like a notepad, so it's like kind of script like. Uh, but I also don't just read off of what I wrote. It's more like bullet points. So it still feels conversational and natural when I when I say this stuff. What's my favorite anime? My favorite I will always say my favorite anime is One Piece, even though I'm not caught up. I am rewatching it right now. I'm I'm at Marine Ford. Uh like the end of it, I guess. I recently watched, um, I watched Barakamon again, good slice of life anime, funny, and then also an old anime about bread making called Yakitate Japan. That one's also really good. It's like the OG food wars where they would taste a food and then they would have like an out of body experience. Hello, Dr. Carrot PhD. That's a good name right there. Cute hairstyle, but let's see. What if I just do this?
I'll do this so I can keep track of what I've done. And then... I'll duplicate them. Get rid of Kenlin. What about just a ponytail instead of braids? Have I looked into the One Piece live action? I watched it. I enjoyed it. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. And it's actually what made me and my sister rewatch One Piece because we were like, I want to go back to the, you know, the beginning of One Piece, the, the nostalgia of it. So that's why we're rewatching it. You thought it was wasted money? I thought it was good. It had its lows and its highs. It wasn't like, totally amazing to me, but I like how it's getting people into it. Hello, LPS Emily. How come your name is like super fancy? It's like highlighted and stuff. I thought the actors were good, but I do think um, Usopp definitely could have done a better job. And... I'm not a huge fan of how Zoro was played, but I think it's a nice touch of like a new live action version of Zoro. I feel like it's enjoyable if you can separate your existing like views on the characters and just see the live action as its own thing because it is an adaptation. And because like um, Usopp would be like, <laughs> like oh yeah like he would be like that he was giving kind of english dub but <laughs> other than that you know i'm hoping in season two he gets uh, some acting training and gets out of that like english dubby vibe um yeah what's going on here My sister thinks that Luffy was cringe. She couldn't get through it because of it. But I, I, I didn't mind it that much. You know, everyone has different tastes. What if I give her just these types of bangs? I don't like it. I already don't like it. Okay. Side bangs. Let's keep the side bangs. And go with the low pony. Curly. Her chaps. You, you like my sister more. Uh, my one, like, I think my biggest critique on the One Piece live action is that it felt very costumey. Uh, like, the costumes. It really felt like people were just cosplaying the characters rather than, you know... Like, I don't like the, the hair color that they chose for Nami. I feel like they could have tried to make it at least look like a natural orange. Uh, and her eyebrows, I don't know, like, the eyebrows are too dark. But there wasn't anything that was so, like, big for me that stopped me from just enjoying it. Am I a fan of drawing side profiles? I'm working on it. I have a Pinterest board of like the side profiles that I try to, that I, I plan to draw and study in the future. I used to really struggle with it because I'm just like, where do I put the eyes? And where, like the nose would always look weird and also the lips. Like when I used to draw side profiles, Emily, it would look like this. It would be like nose, nose. And then the lips, they would always look like this. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I'm like, why do the lips always look like this? But that's, that's how the lips look inside profiles. You know, it's like, 
And then the eyes. The a thing that I found with the eyes, actually. Like, let's say you have eyes like this. And how the, um, the, the eyebrows would. Because so, most people just do, like, a normal front-facing eyebrow. Like this. But then you have to, like, kind of line it up here. Because it's not going to go past the eyes boundaries. So it it would be a shorter brow like that instead. Like it wouldn't go past that. Because the, the eyebrows are aligned with the eyes. It would be like that. Gosh. This, I mean, that just looks bad in general. But yeah. Let's see any chats that I missed. Um... He was giving TikTok F boy yes. Favorite K drama. I haven't been watching K dramas a lot nowadays, but I used to. Uh I remember really liking Full House. That's a really old one. With uh with Rain. As someone who hasn't watched the the anime and just went into the live action. Yeah, I, I feel like the story makes up for the stuff that most people would kind of find wrong about a live action because the story is just good. I do have some icks with the way they did the story and how they changed it, but I feel like it's still the same overall. I've been getting better at drawing hands. I, I mean, everyone says it all the time. Practice makes perfect. I, I mean, practice really do work. We're crazy, right? Is it, isn't Arcane um, confirmed for season two next year? Excited for that. The only... <laughs> not the only good thing, but that's one good thing that's come out of League. Favorite casted character in live action One Piece. I really like Mihawk. I thought Mihawk was perfect. It's just that when I rewatch the anime, Mihawk, he sounds way older. Like Mihawk in the live action feels and looks a lot younger, but then in the anime, he sounds like he's like 45 years old. I mean, he's supposed to be Shanks' age. Or around that age, so he is on the older side. But I think he looks great in the live action. Do I watch Tuck and Time? Yeah, I just watched the finale and I teared up like three times. It's just I I feel like I was more sad about the fact that like this like ten year journey just ended rather than what actually happened in the episode. I was one of those people that didn't like the the manga ending when I first read it, but I do think they they adapted it very beautifully and in a way that I understood it better and I was like, oh, okay, you know, like that makes sense and I'm fine with it ending like that. Or not exactly makes sense, but I, it made me more okay with it seeing it in the anime rather than the manga. There's kind of a lot of chats now, and I'm, like, <laughs> having trouble keeping up. I'm trying to... Yes, Kals Mihawk is goaded. I also just really like... I really like Sanji, and I know you like Sanji, too. I'm, I've, I've never really been a huge Sanji fan, like, from the anime, but the live action? Jeez. I'm a Sanji fan right now. I also like how the Mihawk uh, actor, he's just really goofy in real life. If you've seen, like, the videos that his wife takes of him while he's, like, making TikToks. He 
Yeah, I read the manga of Attack on Titan. I feel like reading it as a manga, it's very confusing. And it's hard to exactly know what's going on. And so a lot of it just kind of went past my head. I wasn't able to digest it as well. But the animation did amazing with it. Have I seen Chainsaw Man? No. I know a little bit about it and I know my friends love it. Uh, but lately I haven't been in the mood for something like that. <laughs> it's also why I haven't been watching Jujutsu Kaisen again. I just want like feel good stuff. And Chainsaw Man and like JJK aren't exactly feel good for me at the moment. That's why I've been watching like bread anime or uh barakamon you know do i have go-to characters that i like to draw from shows i'm not a huge fan art person because i feel like when i do fan art uh I get into like this headspace where I will hate my art if it doesn't look exactly like how I want it to look for that character, which is basically exactly like how the character looks, you know? But if, you know, if you're going to be like that, like, right, what's the point of fan art? Because the point of fan art is to draw it in your style. And I guess my mind just kind of clashes with that. Um, but I have drawn fan art of Nami and Robin, so I don't really have a go-to character because I don't do fan art that much. You just dropped a spoiler here. I'm going to remove that message if I can because it's a huge spoiler. I already knew, but for other people... I wish I did that faster. Who else have I drawn fan art of? Um, well, I guess I've drawn fan art of all the One Piece characters since I ha I sell stickers of them. Yeah. Yeah, if it's out there. If I mean, if you exist anywhere on Twitter or Instagram, you probably know them already, but... Maybe there's some people who haven't seen it in here. Maybe, what if I give her a bun? I feel like she's the type of character that would have a low bun because she's very modest, but I don't like drawing low buns from the front view. So maybe I'll just exaggerate it like this. Like a very neat hairstyle. Has anyone else here seen Yakitate Japan? I'll write it down. Yakitate Japan. It's an older anime. But it's so good. Like if you if you liked food wars and the over the top reactions that like the judges had, except less sexual, you would like Yakata to Japan. But they're just making bread. They're just vibing and making bread. Yes, this is the bread one, Megan. It's really good. And it's also kind of like wild it's very wild like there's a guy with an afro who uh, feeds bread to a horse and there's like this 
dude who wears a panda suit. Uh, and then there's this one scene. Oh, I can't talk about that scene. Oh. Um, yeah, it gets kind of wild. If you've seen at all a picture or like some videos of people making burnt croissants, that's from that show where like they, they slap the croissant, the burnt croissant with a spoon and then it turns into a perfect croissant. That's what that, that uh, scene is from. Middle part, maybe? It's giving old. Doesn't look bad though, on her. I don't know, maybe she has a hairband. No. The only baking anime you remember... Oh my god, I used to watch Jumeiro Pastier. If I'm saying that right. That's the one where she's like baking, and then for some reason there's just a bunch of hot guys around her. And then there's like those small fairy type dudes that are helping her bake. Honestly, I always thought that she was kind of cheating. But did everyone have a little fairy? It reminds me of Shugo Chara. Because Shugo Chara had those little fairy dudes also. Yeah, maybe like this. But I feel like she's not really a type of the type of character that would have wisps, but maybe she gets the wisp because her job is chaotic. Yeah, something like I don't know, something like that. I don't think she would have her hair down, but maybe I can mess around with, like, I don't know, when she's going to bed and she has her hair down. Let's see. I'm supposed to be doing her outfit, but I don't think I'll even get to that. I just did one dress for her. It's just fun to talk to everyone, so I've, I'm getting distracted and not drawing. What's her job? So she's supposed to be the gardener for the inn or um, what is it called? Tavern. This character is for this solo RPG tabletop creative writing thing that I'm playing. It's called the Broken Cask where you you have a tavern or an inn and you have an innkeeper and then two staff members and you just make them. You know, you find out what happens in your inn. There's like a table of events. And you roll a dice and it'll tell you, depending on what you roll in the dice, like, oh, like, there's a cleaning event, find out what happens. Or there's a gardening event, find out what happens. Stuff like that. Which, which anime? The bread anime or the baking anime? If it was only her group in Yumeiro Pastier that had fairies, then they were definitely cheating. The first one, the bread anime, is Yaketate Japan. I'll type it again. Is it a one-player game? Uh, you could. I feel like you could definitely play it with other people if you want, but it's made to be a single-player game because um, you can write it down if you want into like a story or you could just keep it all in your head oh later on i don't remember how far i got into it maybe i only did like season one or something i know it's an older anime so i, I really don't remember um i would kind of think she would have curly hair. Like maybe one of those long hairstyles that only curl at the end.
the fun fact about this character, if you weren't here for it, <laughs> her her name is Rayla Dorhand. <laughs> but this name, I got this name from rolling on a table of names from the game. And her last name is actually supposed to be Dowerhand. But then chat um, felt it was best to change her name to Doorhand. There was a poll and everything, and so I changed her name to Doorhand. And the first gardening task, her first gardening job that she got, was literally just tending to the flowers, and she failed it. So... She, she's got some work to do. And some improvement. Wait, why is... oops. Okay, one more hairstyle. Yeah, A for effort. She did 50% of the work, and that's why she failed. Uh, the way I wrote it was that there's two sides of the tavern, and she only watered one side of the flowers because half of the tavern is in another dimension. <laughs> that's wild to say if you don't know the context but half of the tavern is in like a magical place and she was too scared to step into the magical place and so she didn't water those flowers that were in that half of the tavern but her boss this is her boss Kenlin she didn't get mad at her I think Kenlin is the type of character that's just like Oh, you didn't water that half. Um, that's fine. Just do better next time. I feel like she's that type of boss. Why am I missing some stuff here? What did I do? half up half down it's because she has a scar on her eye and that's because when i rolled for her name i actually got her full name is ken lynn one eye so i was like okay she has one eye that means i want her hair to cover her eye it's just character character things that don't make sense right where she has her hair tied up with a bandana and the purpose of that is to get it out of your face but half of it's just still in her face so what's the point but hey nonsensical things in character design redraw some of your ocs do it yes kenlin is kind of i mean she's meant to be she's she's a flirty type right <laughs> if you weren't here for it uh kenlin she is the tavern owner and keeper and the barmaid of her business. And she's a type of character that is a little flirty. She'll like smile nicely while she's waiting tables. And, you know, she'll say sweet things to you and all that to get your business. But then if you get like drunk and you're a little too rowdy when you're drunk, she will threaten you. Like she will get violent because she is a retired adventurer. Um, so I love her. And then Rayla, the gardener, is kind of this sweet, uh, you know, person who's kind of just there for a job because she needs money. But then she, she gets like dragged into all this uh, wild stuff, wild magical stuff that happens at the end. I was going to give her a bun here, but I got distracted. A top bun.
I feel like Rayla, she's not rich, but I don't think she's poor enough to like not be able to afford a ribbon. So maybe she has a ribbon. But um, I don't know. Or a flower, since she's a gardener. So she has one of those hair ties that has a flower in it. Something like that. Ooh, I like this one. This one might be my favorite so far. And I know that I said before that she's kind of a neat person, that she wouldn't have wispies, but maybe after a long day of working in the garden, she gets wispies. Yeah, anything can be a ribbon if you try hard enough. Exactly. It is giving Tinkerbell vibes. I feel like she would switch between the top bun and the low bun. And honestly, I'm hating the middle part in this one. So I'm changing that to the same bangs that she has here. Maybe baby bangs, like what Daphne has in um, Bridgerton. Even though I hate how they look on Daphne, but maybe they look cute on Rayla. You never know. I feel like she has, she would have baby bangs because she went to the salon one day and she wanted to try out bangs. She was feeling very brave that day and then they ended up like, maybe the salon wasn't a good one. And then she's like, are you kidding me? Now I have to go to work with ugly bangs. But then they don't look ugly on her. They look cute. Wait, can you guys hear the music now? There's no music. For some reason it doesn't work. Or is it because of the, the thumbnail? I tried to put tavern music, but only I can hear it. Like, it doesn't work. For some reason it doesn't work, and I'll troubleshoot that after stream. Yeah, I'm in my vibes right now. Yeah, there was supposed to be music, like tavern music, to fit the vibe and atmosphere, you know, set the mood. But only I can hear it. So I'm in my in, in tavern, you know, atmosphere. But unfortunately, you are not. I mean, you can always pull up a, <laughs> a thing. One of those playlists. So maybe this is... Wait, let's change her bangs here. I'm digging the side bang. And maybe maybe this is how her her bangs look when once they've grown grow out. So this is how her hair looks when it's down. All right, hairstyle done. And you know what? Maybe sometimes she goes in with a braid. Let's see. I'll go with a bun. I'll use the bun for this outfit. I'm losing track of my layers. You never play music while you draw? Uh, I switch from music to watching YouTube videos and listening to them, or like podcasts. Before I would listen to audiobooks, but I haven't been in an audiobook uh, mood lately. This... Get rid of that. 
All right, let's complete a few outfits here. Where's my Pinterest window? Just a modest going to work dress here. Perhaps a long sleeve. I think in my game it's fall, so it's cold weather. Also, I'm trying to figure out a way to like share what goes on in my solo RPG games. I'm for sure going to do a video on my D&D &D one talking about that and drawing the scenes. But for this in one, I was like, because I'm kind of writing it down kind of like a story and I was like, if I wanted to share that to people who are curious about it, like, I wonder what the best way I could do that is, because I don't want to make a, a blog, like, website for that. But I'm like, I don't know, do you guys have any ideas on how I could do that? I don't think I want to post it on a place like, I don't know, Archive of Our Own or something. I was thinking, I don't know, maybe on Discord, I could just link, like, a Google Doc of, like, what happens. Um, I'll type it here. It's called the Broken Cask. If you want to try it out yourself, it is $10 for the PDF. Wattpad. I've messed around with Wattpad before. I don't really like it because Wattpad depends on people starring or hearting your chapters individually. And it gets kind of weird from that. I really kind of want to do it in a way where there's a lot of interaction between me and you. You know, where you could comment on what's going on. Because really, with sharing it, that's what I want to know. I want to know what everyone thinks of it. Like, is there a character you dislike? Is there a character you love? You know? And I could throw in the plot twists and break your hearts. Who knows? Yeah, I feel like I'm leaning more towards Discord. But I don't know how popular that would be. But as long as there's some people who can talk about it with me, talk about my story with me, then that's all I really care about. I don't care if it's popular. No hands. I will not draw hands. Oh, she's so cute. Okay, let me give her a different dress. I feel like this is looking a little short. There's something going on here that makes it's making it look weird. Because the corset is like bringing her her chest up because that's how corsets work. But maybe her arms look short. Oh, whatever. I'm not going to think about it too much. Discord would be better. Yeah. Turning on commenter mode on Google Docs is also a good idea. Yeah, I'll probably mess around with that. Um, it's just that my Discord is like really dead <laughs> because I'm not a good Discord server owner. Um, but I do have a book channel in that that I don't talk in, but I feel like as long as I let people know what's going on, you know, there could be some interaction. Yeah, theorize and discuss, yes. Cause I think it's too niche to turn into a video. Yeah, I have a I have a Discord. It's kind of inactive other than the art channel. The art channel is really active, like people sharing their art in there and uh, talking to each other. 
Wait, if you want to join, I'll send an invite link here. But I will uh, warn you. Yeah, you could link. Uh, you can press the link in the description, and you can also just press this one. Um, it's not that active. I will be transparent. It's not active. Like, general chat is not active. But it might be active soon if once I... If I really start to do the story thing here. Let's do a couple more outfits and then that'll be it for stream. Let me put these together. Rayla. The low bun kind of reminds me of um, Penny from Stardew Valley. That's her name, right? The one with the orange hair. And then I'll bring this over here. And then... Maybe that. Over here. You just like to be part of things, honestly. I feel that. Honkai event. Hope it's going well for you. Did anyone else uh, play the Fall Guys event in Final Fantasy XIV? I missed it because I didn't want to. I didn't want to resub. Is it still going? You haven't won yet? Megan, step it up. Step it up, Megan. Oh, wait, her face disappears with that layer. I have to bring it back. Wait. Oh, there you go. It's a two month event. How is it? Okay, I guess I still have time. If I, if I want to. I guess I'll just erase. Um, she'll have a braid in this one. Braid's kind of cute on her. There are cheaters in Final Fantasy Fall Guys, just like real Fall Guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's so lame. That is so lame. No other Final Fantasy enjoyers in chat. Let's see, how else can I... How else can I... Ooh, what if she had like a governess dress? And then... Uh, let's see, what else I can... Like... Like one of those dresses that are like this. Very extremely modest. Although I'm not great at drawing them. Ugh, it's not looking good. I'm not gonna lie. You're a filthy Genshin player. 
How do you get the uh the fall guy's like headpiece where there's just a fall guy on top of your head? Because honestly, I want that. Sims 4. I used to have a problem with Sims 4 too. I like modded it and did other stuff that is very legal. And and then um it's one of those games where it's like it's so fun to mod it and then make the house and like customize the sims but then once you start playing it's just like really boring and so that's all i do in there is i make the houses and i make the sims so is there just a an actual fall guy outfit that is like you get to just be a big fall guy because if, if there isn't, then that sucks. Missed opportunity. Lil Simsy. I think I know who that is. I, oh my God. I just remembered. For, for my, uh, when I was in my, my phase where I wanted to make a webtoon. A Sim Lissy, I think. Sim Lucy is this sim youtuber who makes really great looking um houses and i watched i watched them and then i emailed them because i wanted to commission them to make a, a sim house for my characters so like i'd use it for my like webtoon back then when i, I wanted to make one and she actually replied and was like I'm sorry, like, I'm too busy to do this because I think she was pregnant at the time. So I don't know how much she would have charged, but I was, I had saved up money for that. And honestly, I'm surprised she, she actually replied to me because I fully wasn't expecting a reply. Because I'm not confident enough in my house designing skills and I really like hers. A hoodie, leggings, so there's not just like a bean body like how there is a pig. Barbie Dreamhouse game. I saved money to commission this sim YouTuber to, to, to design a sims house for me. So I could use the house as a reference for my drawings of like Sydney and Jules in them. I didn't want to do the work myself. I saved like 200 though. I'm pretty sure she probably would have charged more than that. Yeah. And I even, I even tried to, I emailed another sim YouTuber, but they didn't reply. Honestly, I'm glad she said no, because that is a, kind of an unwise thing to spend my money on at that time. Yeah, it takes up a lot of time. And lately, I've been drawing more, like, buildings and interior stuff, and it's so tiring. And, like, when you draw those things, you also have to design them. And I'm like, I'm not an interior designer. Like, I can't do this. Nor. I'm not liking this dress that much. Maybe I'll give her an apron, too. Because I, I feel like, so far in the story, she's kind of been the main one that's been taking up the cook responsibilities since, you know, she can't garden all day it's like why why would you she just like does the the plants and then she's like okay what do i do now and then ken lynn is like you cook because i'm waiting the tables and then maybe this dress is a little more like this
flared out. Maybe it's pleated. Yup. Honestly, if, if I really wanted a house reference, I really would just... I mean, Clip Cedar Paint has, you know, 3D primitives, like the this stuff. Where is it? These that I've been using. But if I wanted a super detailed house, I would probably just model it in Maya. Since I have access to that from being in college. And then when I don't have access to it anymore, I just cry because I don't want to pay for it. Elber? Elber? I can't say elbow, apparently. Elbow lengths. Gardener gloves. Don't know exactly how gardener gloves look. Actually, so I'm just going to keep these sleeves for now. I'm not a huge fan of this silhouette dress. Oh, I should have. So I'm going to redo it. And okay. So I feel like she would also kind of wear an apron to also protect her, her clothes while she's gardening. Do I prefer Maya over Blender? Blender confuses the hell out of me. Um, I tried, but I mean, maybe now that I know more about 3D art because I've like been in a class for it, then I might understand Blender a little bit better. But oh my god, like when I just tried to learn it from like YouTube, it was a headache. I tried rigging, I mean, I really should not have tried rigging before I learned how to model. I also kind of don't like the controls on Blender. Because you have to like press space bar to like do stuff, right? To like pull up certain tools. But I can give it a try. Because the last time I tried Blender was like a couple of years ago. Ooh, hanging from a pocket. Yeah, that's really good. Let's see. Maybe she has a print that has a pocket. Uh, what kind of pocket? Or maybe her dress has pockets. And it's... God, I have to look up what gardening gloves look like. Okay, if this is kind of medieval-y, would they even have gardening gloves? I feel like they would just use their hands, like they wouldn't care. Or, uh, whatever, let's put gloves. I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> like, they're like hanging out like this. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't feel like drawing them. Gardening gloves. I mean, Maya was also really overwhelming when I first learned it, though. And then don't even get me started on ZBrush. But I actually really enjoy working with ZBrush. It's frustrating sometimes because, like, the controls are so weird and my hands are starting to get confused with, like, my muscle memory on, like, Clip Studio controls and then Maya controls and then ZBrush controls. And I'm like, what's going on? But it's fun. There's so much potential with it. And I feel like it's opened my eyes to like Clip Studio's 3D tools also. And I'm like, huh. Like, maybe I could use this stuff now. Because maybe I can understand it better. Because really what's stopping me from using a lot of the tools that... Clip Studio has is I'm just too lazy to learn it. It's a headache to learn stuff.
I haven't even tried the donut tutorial. That donut tutorial is like the rite of passage, I feel like, for 3D artists, right? Um, let's see. I'm going to have to research what gardening tools like people would use so I could fit her better for this. I really like the way I drew the skirt here, so I'm just going to try to do that. Once again, neglecting the shoes. I refuse to do that today. Another responsibility I'm running away from. The dude who made the donut tutorial is pro AI? Sad. Yeah, that means I'm never doing it. I'll just make, I don't know. Um, well, actually, I've modeled a whole ass demon girl already. So, oh, yeah, I modeled a kitchen. You just want to see that? If I, it's a very quick, like six seconds that I had to render for the video. And those, like, six seconds or seven, it took me like eight hours to render that. It's on Maya, like, I'm like, wow, this is, no wonder movies take so long, animated movies, is because it takes ages to render frames. Oh no, I don't, I can't find it, I'm gonna play an ad while I try to find this. How could I lose this? Oh, it might be. Guess I lost it. A shame. You guys won't be seeing me, or you guys won't be seeing my 3D homework from last semester. What anime has a character named Nana? No idea. Whoa, what's happening? I want to add some flair to her dress, but not sure how to do it while also keeping it modest looking. So, maybe some ruffles? Or, or a bow? I don't know. No, that doesn't look right. So what if she has a collar like this? Like that. And then, I don't know, some lace up in there. Nor Rayla would not have a boob window. Kenlin would, though. I mean, just look at this. 
Which one is this? What would I rate Attack on Titan's ending? Um, overall, I think I would give it an 8. The anime, I will say, the animation is 10 out of 10. Like, it's great. The animation is so good. Even just seeing that, it lets you know exactly why it took so long to animate it. Like, they did everything 3D. It's great. Um, coming from a person who read the manga, there was so much to look forward to with it and a lot to be scared about to see, like, how they would show stuff and, like, animate it. And it was hype to see certain scenes. Uh, sleeves, sleeves. But, uh, from my own opinion of, like, I guess a story... I would give it an 8 out of 10. I, I do think it's a really good send-off to the story and the characters, though. Yeah, they must never see their families, yeah. I heard that there's some con like not controversy but some problematic stuff going on with the production of JJK because you know the animation there is also they're very hard working and I guess it's getting to them and it's becoming unhealthy I'm gonna roll up her sleeves. Once again, no hands. Oh yeah, you didn't see Kenlin. For the people who haven't seen it, here's what I came up with so far. The innkeeper, tavern owner, and barmaid, or waitress. Binge watched it. I'm jealous of you that you watched it all in one go. Because we had to wait 10 years. <laughs> I put on my Instagram that um, I was one of those people that, you know, like when the first episode came out, I was like 13. And I was in 8th eighth, eighth grade, 7th grade. And I remember in my uh, freshman year of high school, back when they were announcing the that they were going to have a live action attack on Titan. I was like talking to my friends and they were like, it's going to release in 2018. We're going to be 18. We should watch it together when we're seniors. And then the live action happened and it was bad. So that was really disappointing, but it's so wild that it took 10 years. It's like, I grew up with the characters since there were so many time skips. It, it was so oh, a great experience. I'm sad that it's over now, though. We're not going to get any more like epic stuff like that. But, you know, it opens the doors for other animes. Maybe I'll give her a fancy dress. Maybe she has one fancy dress that she splurged money on. Like if there's a formal night at the tavern and then Kenlin is like, hey, you got to come in wearing something more uh, nice looking. Don't wear something that will get dirty or something like that.
wasn't One Piece basically the only live action that ever performed well? Uh, I think. I don't know. I haven't really watched the other live actions. Uh, I like. I haven't watched Death Note, but I know that it's bad. I haven't watched Cowboy Bebop, but I heard that it's bad. What kind of dress would she wear? Let's try one like this. Puffy sleeves. Have have any of you seen the Avatar The Last Airbender trailer? Because I have mixed feelings about it, but I'm curious to know what other people think. Because I think it looks good for the most part. My main gripe is that the bald caps look weird. That's all I'll say about it. You have emotions, Liddy, that doesn't... I don't know, like, when I first read that, that didn't look good? Are those emotions good? <laughs> or are they bad? Oh. The CGI. Yeah, the CGI look good. Appa, I think Appa look good. Mixed, mixed. Okay, okay. Anyone else think the bald caps looks weird? Or is it just me? I think Aang's head looks gigantic because of the bald cap. Yeah, you have high hopes. You can't look away from Aang and Zuko said exactly. The bald cap just kind of looks weird. Like, they could have tried to squish down, you know, their hair or whatever even more. I don't like the stress. Give me a new one. Hmm. You gotta go all out and just shave it. I mean, if James McAvoy can shave his head for a role that he didn't even need to shave his head for, then... You could shave your head for a character that's actually bald. Do they, like, do the actors have a lot of hair? I actually don't know. I haven't been keeping up with it. Hmm. What kind of dress?
I I saw some bad stuff about Sokka's actor. Don't know if it's true. About um being indigenous and stuff that they have been doing in the indigenous community that is problematic, but I don't know if it's true. If it is true, I don't like him. I'm having trouble with this dress. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the braid that's bothering me. Braids in the way. I saw stuff that was like he was like selling membership to a tribe or something like that. And it like seemed icky. But I don't I'm not too knowledgeable about um the indigenous community. So I'm not going to talk too much about it. I don't want to spread misinformation. But I haven't really seen good things about him. I know that people have also been, been being mean with his appearance, though, which is I think is uncalled for. Like, Bella Ramsey got a lot of flack for... Their appearance in Last of Us. What am I doing? This is not... Okay. Done like this. Maybe it has some ruffles. Next time I stream, I will probably work on a commission. It's a bus commission that I have for Megan. I will work on that. Um, but I do have one more character to do for this one, which I probably won't do on stream because I know for sure I'm going to struggle with that one. Because it's a, he's a satyr. First of all, he's a satyr, and I've never drawn a satyr. Second of all, he's masculine, and I'm not great at drawing masculine people yet, so I, I will struggle struggle at that. Okay, this is giving cute.
No hands, no hands. I've been working on drawing masculine. I've been like, I've studied some uh, anatomy stuff with it. I think the key to them is really just getting down the jagged, harsh lines. Um, if I guess if they're hyper masculine, but um, I don't know. There's just something about it. There's something about it that's difficult. But it's not as difficult anymore for me. My last video, I drew Miles. Miles Morales. You know, he's masculine. Okay, the braid looks better now. I think I'll probably make her taller if I ever tweak this. I'm just gonna do this. Oh, uh, Elise, are you doing traditional art? Are you doing like alcohol markers or something? Pretty, pretty cool method. Uh, do you have any tips with getting more comfortable with full bodies? Do some pose studies and also you don't have to completely study anatomy, but try to learn kind of the, uh, you know, unsaid rules about proportion human proportions there's that thing that people say um like the human body is worth 10 heads so if i took her head here she's not she is not worth eight heads so she's not a good example actually the eight heads thing doesn't work but because short people tell people they're going to be worth different heads. But um, there's a, these, let's see, let me just demonstrate, I guess. So when you draw a body, right, usually you see artists do like head uh, and then they go like this, neck, head, neck. And then they go like this, which is the collarbones. And then they do shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Um, I guess just knowing where things are. So usually if you're wondering like, where do I put the torso and where do I stop? Um, just decide where you want it to be. So it's kind of like this. And then depending on how tall the person is going to be, the legs are going to be longer than the torso, right? So if we're going like this. And this line should actually be in the middle. You gotta go with these guidelines. And the middle is not where the waist would be because that's way too low. Yeah, it's a different place. But so the torso is not here, but a good place to 
pinpoint where the middle is, is actually the crotch area with the groin. Right. And then from there, you could decide where you want the, the waist to be, which is usually where your elbows are. Right. So you're like, okay, where is this person's elbows? Like right here. Then that's also where the belly button would be. That's that's where the waist would be, right? And then like that. This is such a janky looking body. But I'll just do this. <laughs> okay, let me redraw that. Circle. And then like this. Let's just do like that. Right? And then hips. And then the legs start. And the, the thighs are usually the same. Um, do you want to find like the halfway point here? Because the thighs are usually the same length. Let's see, how much is that? As the lower part of the leg. So thigh, leg, and they're kind of the same. This is where the knee is leg and then then the feet whatever and then the arms elbow elbow lines up with the belly button and then the the hands would usually end up somewhere in the middle of the thighs you know you can test this out with your own body you're like okay like my hands don't go all the way to my knees right so it's kind of in the middle of your thighs. It's like that dumb rule that schools would have back in elementary school. Well, I guess it's not dumb, but where they were like, you can only wear shorts up to finger length. If you put your arm down to your legs, it's in the middle of your thighs. And then like that. Head anatomy with the face it's the same thing where there's proportions where it's like, oh, the legs are the same height and stuff. With a face, um, usually you see people draw a circle like this, right? You could divide the face into those quadrants also. You know, let me get rid of these lines. This will be the last thing I do on stream before I end. Imagine this box of the face. You can divide it into three quadrants. Three. And everyone's face is different also. This isn't just like rules that apply to everyone's face. So three quadrants. Um, this, you know, the middle is the, where the eyebrows are, your brow ridge. The top, I mean. This is where your eyebrows are. Eyebrows. I'll draw, actually I'll do this. Let's make it blue. Eyebrows. And then this, the lower one, is either where the lips would be, you know, lips, or nose. If you put the nose down here, it's kind of a longer nose, you know kind of a longer nose then you could put the lips here and then the eyes eyes <laughs> this is gonna look <laughs> right under the ridge and then you can put the lips right and usually the ears are the bottom of the ears are gonna line up with this line or whatever line you decide where the bottom of your nose is right here so that's the bottom of the ear and the top of your ear you could even look at your own face the bottom of your ear usually lines up with either the bottom of your nose or the middle of your lips like the mouth and then the top of your ears is usually aligned with your eyes or your eyebrows depending on the size of your ears so i'm gonna make this guy like you know where the corner of the eyes are that's where his ears are. 
And since his face is a little longer, And where the mouth would be, like, let's say, right, you're like, oh, God, where do I put the mouth? There's this quadrant that you could divide again into equal quadrants, find the middle point, and that's where the mouth is. Or just a general place, right, general area. You know where the general area is now. The face is so you. <laughs> Yeah, this is exa not exactly the type of face I expected my myself to be drawing right now. And then the head, you know. But that's basically the proportions. I'll do... Let's see. I'll do the other version where the nose is not as long. So... Eyebrows, brow ridge, have the line for the brow ridge. I don't know, let's make this guy mad. Person, mad. Brow ridge. And then maybe their, their lips are on this line instead. And they're like, I'm mad. So their nose would be slightly above the lips. If you if you cut this in half, their nose would be too small. So, you know, nose there. Just slightly above. So this person, maybe they have a large chin. Who knows? <laughs> Let's give him some hair. right your character and then you're like i need to figure out where the ears are same same rule or either the bottom of the nose or where the lips are so since this guy's nose is a little shorter his probably are at where where his lips are and if that feels too like down below for you you, then you can be like, okay, that feels too low. Let's try brow ridge instead of eye. Since this guy is, is with the eye. Let's try brow ridge nose. Then it would be like that. It just, like, go with your feeling, right? If this feels high, then go somewhere in the middle. Let's just lower it. But, yeah, there's, I don't know, Lord Farquaad. Um... Oh, a uh, Helmeppo? <laughs> yeah, that is Helmeppo. But yeah, there's like these kind of unsaid rules that artists know about the proportions of faces and bodies and stuff. For one of my assignments, one of my first assignments in my drawing class this semester was drawing a skeleton. And so I have some knowledge about anatomy in, in terms of that. I like, okay clavicle which is a collarbone neck bone and then uh sacrum no that's not sacrum scapula this the the back your shoulder blades and then those things actually have um a thing like this and there's a socket here for your what is it? Is it humerus? The bone here. Megan knows this better than me. Nurse Megan. Um, is this the humerus? And then here, the uh, elbow. There's uh, the, the radius and the ulna. And I'm pretty sure the ulna is the shorter one. Or not the shorter, the skinnier one. That connects to, you like, the pinky side of your hand and then the the radius this is probably this information is probably going over a lot of people's head um but you know if you learn this type of stuff about the skeleton you start to understand a lot about the human body and you start to understand 
why it is drawn the way it is. Because if you look at your own hand, there's that bump on your wrist, the bone bump. And if you know about that bone bump, if you know what it is, you 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 become aware that it's like, hey, it's there. And if I'm drawing a hand, I should put it there because that's how hands look. And like if I draw um, a hand, this is the wrist, and then this is the thumb, and um, fingers, phalanges, whatever. There's a bone here that would stick out like that. Probably not that much, but everyone's hand does that. There's kind of like a bone, right? And when you're aware of that stuff, because you know what the skeleton is, uh, you're, you're aware of how to draw it, you know? Same with the leg. The ankle has these bones from your leg that are kind of like that where they stick out is because that's those bones like that and then it's feet but foot or whatever so and then hands phalanges is what they're called the fingers like that whatever and then rib cage everyone knows what a rib cage is and then the sternum and the vertebral column here that's like that that's your spine um and there's ribs here that stick out like that on the bottom and then this is the sacrum i think there's this triangular looking thing that connects your spine to your pelvis Question mark? Your pelvis. Pelvis. Right. Whatever that is. And then, somewhere here, there's a socket for your leg bone, the femur. That big bone right there. And then, patella, which is that circular thing on your your knee that moves sometimes. Did I learn all this stuff in art school? Yeah, because my drawing professor, even though it's an intro to drawing class, decided that she wanted to torture us and we had to learn the bones and the skeleton and we had to draw it anatomically correctly. And then we had to do the muscles. I'll pull up my homework here. But honestly, as much as I dreaded it while I was doing it, it really does help a lot in like knowing this stuff. I've been avoiding it for a while, but once someone forces you to do it, you're like, oh, wow, my brain is enlarging. I'm learning. And now I could use this. So, oh gosh, this has my, my name on it, though. I'll just try to keep my name out of it when showing you there <laughs> I had to draw this so this is what I was talking about bones sticking out bones bones sticking out there's a triangular thing oh I forgot the hole inside the pelvis then uh right here the femur that circular thing on your knee that moves. Yeah, it, the VOD is going to be up later. I'll probably try to timestamp it and stuff. Tibia, big bone, where that inner bone that sticks out on your ankle is. And then the fibula is the one that sticks out even more on the outer part of your ankle. And then feet. Um... Because, like, if I mean, even just knowing the clavicle, right, the collarbones, even just knowing how this works, you're like, okay, that's why people draw those lines when they draw chests. And then I also had to do muscles. 
Oh gosh, naked people. Does YouTube let me do that? Oh, here are the muscles. Here are the muscles. Once you learn the muscles, I shaded this badly, but right? The sternocleidomastoid, big word. That's the line that people draw on the neck and it connects to the collarbone, the clavicle. And then this, the deltoid, I called it the diploid earlier. Um, you know, that's on your shoulders. Obviously, fat is going to cover a lot of this stuff, but even if you know it, and even if, you, if your character has fat, you know where this stuff is. So, um, you know that it's there, and then you can still use them as guidelines. Like, this muscle right here wraps around the knee, and that's what creates the shape of the thigh. Even on characters who have fat, they still have that area of the thigh that has that shape. And the this stuff, yeah. <laughs> Very good. So let me finish the skeleton. What is it? Is this the fibula? Fibula. And then the tibia sticks out and it's lower. It's lower on the ankle. And then blah 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 because those are small bones. And I did this wrong. There's a hole. A hole here. And then the thing that kind of looks like balls. Alright. And then the face. Skull. Yay. Like, uh, what I was talking about earlier, if you're drawing a neck, I'll draw this guy's neck. Right here. Sternocleidomastoid. That muscle. And then clavicle. Clavicle. So, when you draw the neck, you know, you just draw that neck, that neck, and then... There's muscles here, too, in this area. So, it, it's not gonna go like this. It's gonna go like this. There's that, the muscles in that area. So that's that person, and then, then shoulder. Deltoid. Deltoid muscle. If they're super muscular. Yeah. Um, it really helps. Even if you just look at it, you don't even have to draw it. You don't have to torture yourself like what my professor did to me. But yeah, Helmepo got buff. I mean, honestly, he is pretty buff in the live action, so... And we got a full view of it, right? It just helps so much. You know, and then right here, a sternum, then pecs, the pecs, pectoral muscle. That's Helmepo. Helmepo. Am I spelling this right? Is it, is there two L's or is there only one and two P's? But yeah, learn this stuff. Even, um, okay, one last thing, educational thing. If I'm drawing a person, and this is their skeleton. I'm sorry, I have to undo all this. Last thing before I end. If that's their skeleton, You could just do the main parts of this and it'll help a ton in drawing the body. So they're called landmarks. Uh, I have a thing here. I have my homework on it. These things. This is where the clavicles meet, clavicle, clavicle, sternum, ribs, but I'll make that more visible in my drawing. So. Uh, 
I'll do this. Hello. I'm almost ending. I'm just being very educational right now before I end. So, remember sternocleidomastoid, the muscles that meet with your clavicle? That point where they all meet, that's uh, called the suprasternal notch. It's that dip in your neck, or, uh, you know, where your collarbones meet. Everyone has it. You can put your finger in there and poke it and stuff. Um, so you could literally just draw that. As long as you can pinpoint where that is, you're like, okay, that's where that is. And then you're like, collarbone, collarbone, you know. And then, uh, actually, I'll make that disappear. And then you draw a line down like this, because that's this part, right? And then you draw lines where you would think that the the ribs would be, like the bottom part of the ribs, this part, this shape right here. So if I drew that over here, it would be like this, mark, maybe I'll do this. I'm being picky. Boom, 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 boom. And then, like that, we have that. When you're, bot when you're drawing a body, when you're bodying a body. And that's like the circle that maybe you would draw for the torso. There's, and then there's the belly button. It's right here. And then it's actually kind of lower. It wouldn't line up with these. It would be lower. And then the the tip of the pelvis are kind of like this area right here, or another point. And then the groin, the pubic area, is another point. And you just connect those. So... Like that. And now you have your guidelines. Because you know that the belly button aligns with the arms. So if this is the clavicle, that's where the shoulder would start. And then elbow, shoulder, elbow. Since this is where the, the neck, sternocleidomastoid go, you can go like that, neck, neck. And then, yeah, and then this guy's super tall. And then you're like, okay, that's where the ribs are, so it would be like that. That's where the waist is, because that's where the belly button is. And then the, the, pel the pelvis goes out like that. So that's the, where the hip is, and it would go out. This is where the groin is, so this would actually be a little lower than what I have here. So you're like, groin, right? And then you kind of just guess on the legs. That, that rule that I said before, legs are usually the same size. So if you go like this, cut that in half. That's where your knee is. That's where your knee is. And then leg, and then feet. I mean, he's looking a little off because it's buff, but you know, it helps still. It's better than nothing. Really, his legs would be longer than this, but it's better than nothing. So there's so many types of these guidelines that you could do. You could literally just do, um, Oh God, this, where you just take, you draw lines on like where things line up, or you could do this landmark thing if you know a little bit more about the bones, or I don't know, you could draw a whole entire skeleton if you want, 
but it helps it helps a lot my my ability to draw full body illustrations or full body characters has improved drastically ever since i learned this and i had to suffer through uh, a class to do it because my my professor is a perfectionist but I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more if I got to decide what I did. Because guess what? Let me pull up that homework assignment again. This, this, this assignment, I got a 48 out of 50. I didn't get, I didn't get a perfect grade for this, even though I think I deserved a perfect grade. And I don't even know what she thought was wrong with it. Maybe, I don't know. Um, the feet are too small or something like that. Like, that's how my professor was and that's why I hated it. But I think if you find a way to make it fun for yourself, then, you know, then it'll be fun for you. Okay. I think that's all I have for today. You got really educational there. And this stream will be up. The VOD is going to take some time to process, to upload, but it will be up. And I'm going to try to timestamp the different sections of it, which might take a while, but yeah. Yeah, she could have at least given me comments on why I got a 48, and like, she didn't. And I'm like, you suck. So, uh, I'm going to play one more ad before leaving, because I'm sneaky like that. But... I'm going to end and thank you so much for being here and listening to me talk about my characters and stuff. All right. Bye.